war comes to a climax with a state of insurrection among the Sudeten Germans. There's Henlein, the Sudeten chieftain, in these exclusive pictures. The scenes of a Sudeten demonstration. The German minority in Czechoslovakia demanding a plebiscite. And that would mean they would surely vote for union with Nazi Germany. There are fights and clashes with the Czech police, disturbances far and wide. And behind it all stands Hitler. His inflammatory speech at Nuremberg incited the riotous outbreak. He shouted that Nazi Germany would help the Sudetans, who take their guidance from Berlin. In line, conferring with Hitler, there they are together. Mediation attempted by British Lord Runciman. He strives for peace. If Germany should invade Czechoslovakia to aid the Sudetans, it would probably mean world war. The government of President Banesh declares martial law to quell the Sudeten disorders. Death penalty for rioting. Then Banesh receives a Sudeten ultimatum, demanding the revocation of the given decree. This he ignores. Czechoslovakia has an efficient army and will fight, though desirous of peace. The Czechoslovak government and the allied governments of the Little Anton are most emphatically for peace and shall firmly work for peace. Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain makes a dramatic announcement. He'll fly to see Hitler for a personal conference, presenting a Franco-British plan for a settlement. Last-minute effort to avert war. Chamberlain flies to meet Hitler. The beginning of disaster for Czechoslovakia. That visit without precedent with the British Prime Minister determined on peace. I'm going to meet the German Chancellor because the situation seems to me to be one in which discussion between him and me may have useful consequences. My policy has always been to try to ensure peace and the Fuhrer's ready acceptance of my suggestion encourages me to hope that my visit to him will not be without result. Chamberlain goes to hear Hitler demand Sudeten German areas of Czechoslovakia. Britain agrees. France agrees. The Czechs try to delay, but British and French pressure force them to surrender. Hitler at Nuremberg, the party convention of the Nazis. Here it was that the Nazi chief made the inflammatory declarations that Nazi Germany would give support to the Sudeten Germans. And that stirred the turmoil among the Sudetens. The Czechoslovak government responded with stern measures, and German invasion appeared imminent with probable world war. These scenes in quaint medieval Nuremberg were the background for the swift move of world events. Hitler reviewing the armed might he mustered for military action. The annexation of the Sudeten area is demanded, and marching among the stormtroopers is Goering, Nazi number two man. And so they marched, with war hanging in the balance. Foreign attacks, and soon after this, British Prime Minister Chamberlain flew to see Hitler. Then swiftly, the French and British governments decided to yield to the Nazi demand, partition Czechoslovakia, give Sudeten land to Germany. The British Prime Minister comes to meet Hitler. The hope of peace that now has brought the world to dread suspense, brought Europe to the brink of war. He flew from England to Germany and took a train to Berchtesgaden here. The Prime Minister of Great Britain on that visit without precedent, his desperate attempt to avert the catastrophe. Hitler demanding the Sudeten German portions of Czechoslovakia. Chamberlain seeking an arrangement. Soon after his arrival, he goes to Hitler's mountain retreat. This, the guarded seclusion in which broods the mystical autocrat of Germany. The French government is in agreement with the British peace visit. The world impressed by the dramatic attempt to avert war. The British prime minister coming to the German right sphere to compromise the German demand on Czechoslovakia. They meet for that historic conversation which was to result in Britain and France agreeing that Hitler was to have Sudetenland. Back to London the next day to push international action. Neville Chamberlain seeming cheery and confident. His manner appearing to indicate that all is well, but it isn't. But he broadcasts an optimistic report. Yesterday afternoon, I had a long talk with Herr Hitler. It was a frank talk, but it was a friendly one. And I feel satisfied now that each of us fully understands what is in the mind of the other. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. You won't, of course, expect me to discuss now 
what may be the results of that talk. Then the French statesmen arrive in London, Premier de Lottier and Foreign Minister Bonnet. Coming to hear from Prime Minister Chamberlain of Hitler's demand for Sudetenland, de Lottier and Bonnet. And next will come British and French pressure on the Czechs, compelling them to yield. What stand does Mussolini take? A vast throng hears the black shirt dictator in a fiery speech declare completely in favor of Hitler's claim on Czechoslovakia. At Trieste, a reaffirmation of the Rome Berlin Axis. The 10 days that almost led to war. Prime Minister Chamberlain is full of hope and smiling optimism as he flies to Germany for his second meeting with Hitler, who comes to meet him halfway here in the Rhineland. Hitler comes to make the demands that throw the world into that nightmare of 10 days. Chamberlain lands in Germany and reviews a guard of honor. He has a surprise coming as he motors to see Hitler. At their first meeting, they seem to have the Czechoslovak question settled. Now as he arrives at the hotel for the second meeting, Hitler's demands have increased. There they go inside, and Hitler's ultimatum is that he must get Sudetenland in 10 days. The Czechs in turmoil. Under British and French pressure, Prague agreed to Hitler's first demand, give up the Sudeten Germans. The cabinet resigned, and a new cabinet took power. This one, the premier is the one-eyed General Serafi. They get the second Hitler demand, the 10-day ultimatum. They reject it and order mobilization of the army. Call to the colors. Small nation, small army, but modern and efficient. And they'd fight. But could they resist the overwhelming might of Germany till help could come? They were going into a desperate war, of that they were sure. Everywhere are posted the mobilization notices. Several classes call to the colors, for Hitler announces once more that he'll invade Czechoslovakia after the 10 days are up. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Chamberlain leaves Germany, going back to London. He takes with him the Hitler 10-day ultimatum. He says he was surprised when Hitler gave him that drastic demand. Home, the German ultimatum must be rejected, and war seems inevitable. But the Prime Minister of Great Britain still hopes for peace. I trust that all concerned will continue their efforts to solve the Czechoslovak problem peacefully because on that turns the peace of Europe in our time. Number 10 Downing Street, the Prime Minister's residence. Chamberlain has called an immediate cabinet meeting there to inform Hitler that if he attacks Czechoslovakia as he threatens, it will mean war with Great Britain, France, and Soviet Russia. He has the support of the British public in seeking peace or preparing for unavoidable war. Foreign Secretary Lord Halifax arrives for the cabinet meeting. The diplomatic atmosphere is tense. Negotiations seem futile. War Secretary Hor Belicia in charge of military preparations. Home Secretary Sir Samuel Hor. Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain flies to meet Hitler with the Franco-British note of warning to Germany. Foreign Minister Bonnet goes too. The warning will be that if Hitler does not back down, there will be war. The crisis nears the breaking point. The French declare partial mobilization. A mother's farewell as her son goes and the troop train pulls out for what threatens to be the most frightful war in history. Weeping women. They don't know that in the nick of time, Chamberlain appeals to Mussolini to intervene. Mussolini's telephone call to Hitler and that final conference at Munich. They don't know in England where trenches are dug in Hyde Park, air raid shelters. London in dread of air raid. In dread of gas attacks, masks for children. But the Munich conference comes to swift compromise. Hitler to march on the 10th day, a mere token invasion. Germany gets Sudetenland. London ready for war, but it's peace instead. The price of peace. The German triumphal entry into Sudetenland. Hitler. There's joy to tears. The Germans have been for long generations at enmity with the Czechs. Their desire to join Germany inflamed by intense agitation. So this is a liberation to them. The banquet of victory. Some Roman banquet of Lucullus. Look what her dines on. Not even soup for the ascetic vegetarian. Just a couple of crackers for a victory banquet. 